Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, if you saw in the last video for this 311 cubic inch small block Chevy, little RPM ripper we're gonna be putting in Jumping Jack Flash, this awesome nostalgia front engine dragster, we've got the crankshaft installed. I know I said in the next video what we were gonna do is get everything assembled with the pistons, rods, rings, and all that so we can get them poked in there. However, if you notice before I put the crankshaft in this, I did a video on how to measure main bearing clearance. Well, before we move forward, I want to show you the same method on how to measure for connecting rod clearance. It's not much different than what we did on the main bearings, but there's a couple things on there that you're going to need to know. So with that, let's show you what we're working with. All right, real quick, what's going to get poked in this engine for pistons and rods and bearings and all that fun jazz? Well, I'm running a forged sealed power speed pro uh, piston. Um, it's a, it's meant for high compression. If you can see here, well, I got, I'm going to have some small chamber heads. It's got a nice little bump on that. Um, I'm running some Hastings pistons rings, some Clevite performance bearings that have an extra thousandths clearance built into them. Um, a nice set of Eagle, uh, forged H beam connecting rods. And so that's the parts we're working with. However, in this video, we're going to be working with a connecting rod and we're going to be working with our bearings. From there, it's going to be the same thing. What we're going to need here is you're going to need your dial bore gauge and you're going to need a micrometer. So yeah, in this video, what I'm going to show you is, is how to measure for connecting rod clearance. It's not too bad, like I showed you in the last one. It's more of that race nerdy engine math. It's kind of fun once you learn it. So tell you what, guys, let's get some stuff set up and let's show you how to do this. But real quick, I got to show you something pretty cool that's going to come in handy here pretty soon. I got a really awesome uh, connecting rod vise. This is a Proform tool. We're going to show you kind of like a product review at some point, but it fits well with my Miami vise. Get it? Ha ha ha. Dad joke. All right. So first off, um, this is going to follow the same thing with the main bearings where we're going to write down all of our figures and all that. And the one I'm using on here, um, I did have everything uh, when I weighed everything out. Um, I did mark everything. So I have pistons and rods that go in a special location or in the, a certain location. So this is number eight. So basically what you're going to do, like I have in my notebook, like I showed you in the main bearing one, I'm going to write down uh, um, locations for s starting from front, actually back to front, because I'm going to start out with eight. It's going to be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the journal in each location as I go along with a micrometer. And I'm going to write that number down. So in this case, for demonstrative purposes, this is a small journal crank. It is standard. What I need to do is I need to come in here very gently. You don't want to go in there and nick anything. So what I need to do is the first step of this is I need to get this measured. Just be very careful so you don't nick anything. And what you're going to do with that is you're going to write that measurement down. So All right, so after measuring the rod journal, where that rod is going to go with your micrometer, what you're going to do is you're going to write that number down just like I did there. And then you're going to set up your dial bore gauge to two inch. So I already did that. And it's pretty simple. After you get your measurement on your um, rod journal, lock it down and you're going to put that in a vise. And then you're going to set up your dial bore gauge. So it zeroes out on two inches. If you look at the last video I did on bearing clearances on the mains, a little bit more explanatory on how to do that. So yeah, now what I'm going to do is I need to take uh, a couple bearings and I need to put them in the actual rod and get it torqued down. All right, real quick, guys, I do want to show you something um, on rod bearings. Um, you want to make sure you look at the shells. It's kind of hard to see in this, um, but what you're going to do is you're going to read in not enough light here in that location and you're going to read in this location because there is actually an upper and a lower to these shells. You want to make sure you get them oriented correctly. So what I'm going to do is, if you ever want to know the rod side itself, what that is going to be like this, this is your upper and the cap is your lower. 
So I'm going to check these real quick. Kind of hard to see. Here's my upper. I'm going to get that in there. Snaps it in place. Just like that. And I'm going to put my lower into place. There's tang to tang, basically. Get that into place. All right. From there, what you're going to do is you're going to want to make sure that you put this together. If you notice, there's two different radiuses on here. The small radius here. You can see that. Sorry, need to bring that up. Let me show you here real quick. If you look at these caps, there's a radius that's larger than the other, okay? So you wanna make sure you get your rod orientation right. This is the outside of the crank where the fillet is, and this is the rod side here. Uh, so what you gotta make sure though, is when you assemble these, you gotta make sure that you match them up correctly. So what I'm gonna do, ARP bolts, I already got Molly Lube on them. I'm gonna get these fingers started. I'm gonna put this in my Proform rod vise, connecting rod vise, and we'll be using this a lot as we go down um, into building things with this engine and my 292. So here's what you're gonna do. Gonna get that snug in there so it doesn't move anywhere. I'm gonna run these in evenly. You need to seat this and torque them. But you wanna go a little bit of time on there so you, eat, you get them evenly put in there. Get them snugged up. And now I need to torque these. I'm gonna look at my box of connecting rods to see what the torque spec is. These are an ARP 8740. And on my instructions here, so these are 7 ARP 8740, identified on the head, 63 foot pounds. Not too shabby. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those torqued down. Got my light duty torque wrench set to 63 foot pounds. I'm just gonna snug these up again real quick. Okay. Hit that click. Check both sides. Okay, there we go. Now we can actually check the clearance. All right, so all I did was I took the connecting rod and I moved it out and clamped it in this vise. Now remember what I did on, on my dial bore gauge is I set this up to two inches. Basically the area that I measured on the crankshaft journal is what I set this out to be zeroed out. So if this thing was to actually go to zero, that means it's two inches. If it starts going to this side of it, well, that's a smaller hole. But if it goes to this side of it, that's a larger hole. And that's what we're going to see. That larger aspect of there's your clearance. So if you see the larger tick marks, each one of those is a thousandths. The smaller one are half thousandths. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to go here, kind of the 6 and 12. And I am coming right in at two and a half thousandths. So yeah, that's how you check that. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. Let me grab my camera. I know it's at a little bit of an angle, but I got the dial bore gauge in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to rock this back and forth 
And when you see it going like that, then stop and then start coming back. You want to go to that point where it stops. And right where that point stops, right there roughly, that's about two and a half thousandths. One, two, it's right about two and a half thousandths. So that is how you check main bearing, or sorry, connecting rod clearance without plastic gauge. All right, so that's how you check connecting rod clearance without using plastic gauge and using a micrometer and a dial board gauge. If you notice, it's pretty much the exact same thing as doing your main bearings. Um, you do want to make sure, like just like the other one, you want to make sure you have clean surfaces you're working with. Clean tools are also another thing you need. And really, guys, make sure you put your connecting rod bearings in the right upper and lower. Orient your connecting rods together torque them down, take your measurements, and record it. What I did after that was as I wrote those measurements down in my notebook, I like recording all these numbers. It's nice to have going down the road, especially if you know you sell something or trade something or just can't remember something fails. Um, you know what you did, you recorded it, and you know what to look for. So with that, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to go through and the rest of those connecting rods, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to measure each journal, to the rod that goes to it and i'm going to do what i showed you on that one record it and get my numbers that being said i'm going to do that after dinner because i'm hungry and it's late so once i get that done guys i'm going to call that good next video that's when we start on putting the pistons and rods and rings and all that fun jazz together with that i hope you like this video by the way that connecting rod vice is absolutely awesome i really like it it comes in handy so that's going to be a useful tool that i got from proform moving down the road with that enjoy your night have a safe weekend 2x garage next one